Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Wednesday, March the 20th. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It is game day, the Vancouver Canucks host the Ottawa Senators tonight at Rogers Arena, kicking off a seven game homestand, kind of strange that they have a seven game homestand with only nine games left, but that's what it is, and I'll be going to tonight's game, usually Wednesday night, can't watch the Canucks, I'm at my church, it's our re- weekly religious education night. But we're on spring break, so I get to go to the game, bringing my son Jacob. So this isn't my eldest son, Sean, the one who knows a lot about the Canucks. This isn't my lovely wife, Gail, who threatens me to take me to at least one out of every two games. This isn't uh, my daughter, Kayla, who likes to eat the expensive cotton candy. This is my second son, Jacob, the championship bowler, the guy who admittedly doesn't know a lot about the Canucks, but has appeared on a couple of my live streams. Go figure. He's very entertaining. I know this can be a lot of fun tonight. He'll ask a funny question or he'll say something at the, the perfect time that will have me in stitches all night. So I'm looking forward to the game. We're sitting in our regular seats in section 319. So come say hi uh, or intermission or maybe meet me in the concourse, whatever it may be. Look forward to chatting some Canucks with you tonight. The Canucks are coming off two straight wins. Dallas, Chicago on the road. Three out of the last four they've won. And therefore, understandably, not a lot of lineup changes. The only change in net. Jacob Markstrom back in net. Sure, we'd love to see Demko more. But the Canucks still not mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. And I, you probably may have noticed, I haven't talked about the playoffs in one and a half weeks, two weeks or so since they went on that losing streak. But if they win tonight, they're only four back of the last playoff spot. Now, granted, all the teams in front of them have games in hand and have to play each other. So it's not realistic. But still, it's kind of exciting to, to know that they're not out of it completely. Makes you wish, though, that they didn't lose all those games in late February, early March. If they had won just three or four of those, they'd be right in the in the middle of a playoff hunt. So Markstrom and Nett, and then going out front, uh, going in front of him, you have Edler, Biega, Sautner, and Shen, Breezebaugh, and Stetcher. That means that um, Pouliot and Tevez are healthy, not playing. That means that Hughes and Hutton still injured, although Hughes will be reevaluated today. And believe it or not, uh, that's how time flies. It's been a week since he arrived in Vancouver and met with the media and said he would be reevaluated in a week. So today's the week. We'll see. We'll hope for good news sometime tonight. Maybe he's playing by this weekend, but we shall see. Up front, same forward lines. It is Horvat, Erickson, Pearson, Pedersen, Besser, Levo, Gaudet, Vertanen, Granlin, and Beagle with Schaller and Mott. That means Berchi, Spooner, and Godobin are not dressing up front. So that's who the Canucks, that's the ice, the lineup that the Canucks are icing tonight. We'll see what happens. Obviously, they still, uh, they're still in the hunt mathematically, so they have a lot to play for. Only thing I want to talk about today is Elias Pedersen. And uh, given that he set the record on Monday night for most points by Canucks rookie, I got to think about when we drafted him back in June 2017. And I put a vlog up, got a lot of views on Twitter and uh, on YouTube, excuse me. And immediately, I didn't know a lot about Pedersen, but I did my research as soon as they, we picked him. And I saw all the reasons why that the Canucks did pick him. And everything I said in that video uh, that I made back in June 2017 still holds true, except for the potential of playing with Jonathan Dolan. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll move that past that now. I won't say too much about that right here. So, but I talked about Pedersen's playmaking, his vision, his fearlessness, you know, his confidence, all those kind of things. And we're seeing how good of a player he is. And he certainly found a stride in the last five or six games with Brock Besser and Brock Besser's scoring streak as well. But then I got to thinking, the Canucks that year, and this is a follow-up to my, my video from yesterday where I talked about this, um, this thought that, or misconception that the Canucks always win in the final 10 games of the season. No, two years ago, they went 1-9. and nine. They dropped to second last overall, but they lost the lottery three times and dropped to fifth, which they ended up uh, picking Pedersen after when he sure Patrick, Heiskanen, and Makar. So for fun, I put on Twitter yesterday, I put a poll up saying, let's say the Canucks did not lose the draft lottery three times. They stayed in the rightful position of, uh, position of second. And let's presume that the New Jersey Devils still picked Nico Heischer, right? So then... Um, Actually, no, I think about it. New Jersey won the, didn't they win the lottery that year? Regardless, let's just say that the Canucks stayed in second. So I said, of these four players, who do you think Canucks management would have taken? And that would have been between the other four guys, Patrick, Heiskanen, Makar, and Pedersen. Got over 400 votes and 45% of your still think the Canucks would have taken Pedersen. 25% are saying Makar. 20% um, are saying Nolan Patrick. And only 10% are saying Miro Heiskanen. So 70% of you, 45 uh, Patterson 25, Makar. You know, it's nice to think that way, but I, I remember after the draft and even leading up to the draft, the Canucks seemed very high on Kel Makar. Um, they needed that puck-moving defenseman. 
Yulevi, of course, they didn't know if he was going to work out. They were so hopeful. This was the year after the Yulevi draft. But they didn't, you know, they, Makar is a different type of player than Yulevi. And I think the fact that um, Colorado, in real life, or real life, what happened when Colorado took Makar fourth, it made the decision very easy for the Canucks taking Pedersen at fifth. So, but it's interesting to, to think that if the Canucks had drafted Makar instead of Pedersen, um, and I've, see, I've had many of you come back on Twitter telling me that actually, as far as you know, the Canucks had ranked Makar first and Pedersen second. So that means he sure or Patrick weren't even in their top two, which I find very fascinating. So just something to think about. You know, I don't want to spend too much time on it, given it's, it's been a year and a half uh, since then. And uh, Pedersen is arguably going to be the best player that comes out of that draft. But just very interesting just, uh, when you think about you know, standings and dropping one spot or gaining a spot in the standings with a late win or a late loss, whatever it is. Yeah, it's all very fluid until the very last game of the season, as we know. And then when they do the draft lottery right after that, now, you know, in, in May or June or whatever it is, probably in May or late April, when they do the draft lottery, and then really it comes down to really good scouting and, and finding really good fits for the team. And as I mentioned yesterday, obviously Pedersen home run, Quinn Hughes we hope to be home run, and the jury is still out on Ole Levy. So just something to think about. Nothing too earth-shattering or... or or mind blowing there. Just a thought is kind of interesting to, to speculate. What would have happened if the Canucks stayed in their second overall pick? Would we have Elias Pettersson as we do right now, or would we have someone like Makar on our blue line? Something to think about. Canucks fans would love to read your feedback below. Leave a comment below either on that topic or the Canucks game against Ottawa tonight, or even your hopes for a playoff position this late in the season. Leave a comment. I'd love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the game today. Enjoy the beautiful weather. If you're at the game, come say hello. Or shoot me a message so I know that you're... Uh, the, ah, shoot. I'm so excited to go to the game. Shoot me a message so I know that you're at the game, and maybe I can come say hi during an intermission. All right, have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks go.